Important historical facts. Underscore things seriously about THIS underscore. The black African, the wretched of the earth, is the only member of the human race who has been brainwashed to think that his ancestors bequeathed him with a curse that has prevented him from attaining aspired goals and life desires. Almost every misfortune he encounters on earth is the fault of some ancestors, who must be bound and cast with the fire of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. The white people don't have terrible ancestors who have done terrible things. No. It's only the black ancestor. Over the years, the black ancestor has been so vilified by Christians they pay tithes, stay up all night, fast and pray to destroy the African ancestor in the name of Jesus. The black ancestor is so wicked he cursed his own kids. Having cursed his ancestor who gave him life, the black man is roaming around the world like a tortoise without a shell. He has no backbone. Zero identity. Thus no race respects him. He's lynched in Malaysia, incarcerated in Cambodia. He's shot like a dog in the streets of America. In Europe, he cleans the white man's shit. And they spit on him. Why won't they? A man who hates himself and despises his roots deserves no respect whatsoever. John Hawkins was a foremost English slave trader, a thief, and by contemporary moral standards he can as well be called a terrorist. John Hawkins made three trips to West Africa in the 1560s and stole Africans whom he sold to the Spanish in America. On returning to England after the first trip, his profit was so handsome that Queen Elizabeth I became interested in directly participating in his next venture, and she provided for that purpose a ship named Jesus. Hawkins left with Jesus to steal some more Africans, and he returned to England with such dividends that Queen Elizabeth made him a knight. Hawkins chose as his coat of arms the representation of an African in chains. Today the generations of Hawkins and Queen Elizabeth I are alive and enjoying life from the proceeds of their evil ancestors. They don't demonize their ancestors despite their active involvement in the greatest evil humanity has ever witnessed. Both individuals sanction rape, kidnapping and mass murder, but their children don't bear ancestral curses like black Africans. You'd be hard-pressed to see a member of the British elite publicly denounce slavery. Isn't it time to emancipate yourself from mental slavery o ye negro? If ancestral curse exists, who should suffer from it? The ancestor who kidnapped and raped and murdered and pillaged and stole and enslaved his fellow man, or the man whose freedom was taken from him? Surely, the man who threw pregnant negro women to sharks at sea because they were too weak, deserves his future generations to suffer and not the man whose society was so pure they had no prisons to punish offenders. Do these black Africans who will go to church today binding and casting ancestral curses know that almost all the top British politicians from the 17th century till the 19th century were proud slave merchants? It is on record that 15 Lord Mayors of London, 25 sheriffs and 38 aldermen of the City of London were shareholders in the Royal Africa Company, RAC, between 1660 to 1690. The RAC alone was responsible for trafficking over 1.5 million Negroes to Britain and twice that number to the Caribbean. David and Alexander Barclays were active participants in the kidnapping and enslavement of millions of black Africans. As was standard practice at the time, the risky and long-term nature of transatlantic slave trading required new banking houses that could offer credits to prospective slave traders for periods of between one and a half to three years. One bank that provided this service was run by Alexander and David Barclay. Their bank still carries their name. The Barclays Bank is also a proud sponsor of the English Premier League that me and you are fanatical fans of Chelsea and Arsenal and Man United today. Their children don't bind and cast their ancestral evil, rather it is the Negro whose ancestors were dehumanized and tortured and enslaved, that keeps praying against ancestral curses. The Bank of England was also involved in the slave trade. Sir Richard Neves, who was the director of the bank for 48 years, was also the chairman of the Society of West India Merchants. A group of vile men who stole Africans and made handsome profits by selling them onto farmers who needed them to work in their sugar and tobacco plantations in the West Indies. Today Liverpool Football Club will be playing Tottenham Hotspur in the Barclays Premier League. Pay attention. How many of you who are Liverpool supporters today know that the initial founders of that football club were retired slave traders, whom in 1892, 
with slavery outlawed, decided to invest their money in a football club that will reap future rewards for their generations to come via a bank called Arthur Haywood and Sons and Company. That bank would be absorbed in turn by the Bank of Liverpool, Martin's Bank, and Barclays Bank. You watch them and shout in ecstasy when they score. But a pastor somewhere will tell you the reason you're poor is because your ancestors committed evil, hence the reason you experience a luck. And you will believe and start casting and binding rubbish. For your information, Liverpool was a major port for the transatlantic slave trade. Slave ships were often built or repaired in Liverpool. Nearly one and a half million Africans were forcibly transported across the Atlantic in Liverpool ships. The Liverpool merchant was the first recorded slave ship to sail from Liverpool. She set sail on October 3, 1699, and arrived in Barbados on September 18, 1700 with a cargo of 220 enslaved Africans. Part owner Sir Thomas Johnson is known as the founder of modern Liverpool. Liverpool City wouldn't be what it is today without the trade in black Africans. The personal and civic wealth gained from slaving cemented the foundations for the Liverpool's future growth. The children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren of the perpetrators of this monstrosity against the black man enjoy heaven here on earth and live in more stable environment. They have managed to stabilize their society and solve their problem and live in relative peace. But the Negro ancestors, the wretched of the earth, who was kidnapped and his freedom forcefully taken away from him, he was sentenced to a plantation for the rest of his life. It is this ancestor in bed many others who is demonized by Christians as having bequeathed their offsprings with curses. This is a historical fact our African brothers and sisters should be aware of. Africans Unite, Shooting Star